Bonjour tout le monde, this is Diane and we are here on We in France where we talk about everyday French life and beyond. But today I'd like to make a little bit of a different video for you. So many of you found my channel from part one of my behind the scenes French bakery series. It's a three part series and several months after setting that video live, it started gaining a lot of traction. And at the time my channel was tiny. I had barely 1200 subs and I wasn't making videos regularly. And out of nowhere, my videos started getting 50,000 views, 100,000 and even more. And just this week, it hit 2 million views. Since then, so much has changed on my channel. And um, since it went viral, I've learned so much about YouTube, filming, video editing. And in this video, I wanna take a minute to celebrate that 2 million milestone and just get into a little bit about what I've learned since making that video. And it was a video that gave me the courage and the confirmation that I was on the right path here on YouTube. And it was exactly what I needed to continue on this YouTube journey. All right, so I hesitated before deciding to make this, um, this video because it makes me uncomfortable, to be honest with you, to put the focus on any of my wins uh, that I've had along the way. So just to be real, YouTube makes me uncomfortable, always has, and that's part of why I do it, but that's a story for another day. Um, just anyway, just know that I decided, you know, after I was writing down some notes for this video, that I realized this video isn't really about me. Um, what I try to do here on my channel is to focus on the viewer and give you a new perspective or something new to think about, learn from, laugh at, show you a place you've never been to or tell you about things maybe you've never thought about. Um, but that said, it's also okay to celebrate a win and to tell people about it. And I think it might be interesting for people, um, both fellow content creators, and also for those of you who are just curious and anyone who needs a little bit of encouragement right now in life. And I really think my message out here will apply to other areas that have nothing to do with YouTube. So keep watching for that. Um, and as I was writing down my notes, I realized that my true message here and what I'm about to talk about, it's not about me. It's not about my YouTube channel or the numbers. The true message here is to believe in yourself, have the courage to push forward even when you think you're getting nowhere. And that's the message I want you to take away uh, from my video today. And I feel like it's one that is so lost, especially in current times. It's, it's been a hell of a year, but let's get into some background. So that bakery video, part one, from conception to publishing it on my channel was the longest production time on any video I've ever made. You know, I had a plan, I had an idea, but I had no experience actually executing the plan uh, because I never made a video like that before. It was hectic, you know? I had several cameras, several mics. I did everything myself. I still do. I'm a one-woman show. Um, and, you know, I'll get back to this, but if you see a lot of YouTube videos, you'll notice that a lot have millions of views. You know, it's like, ah, oh, big deal, right? Two million, it's nothing. But the thing is, I don't have a video background. I don't like being in front of the camera. I don't have a team. And for my tiny channel at the time, it's still small, but at the time, going viral was something I never could have dreamed of, but it was what proved to me that I can do this, right? It was my first time making anything like that, and it was a huge undertaking. You know, the morning of filming, I actually <laughs> forgot one of my mics. So I was like up at 3 a.m., multiple cameras, a bag of equipment, trying to juggle all of that, trying to think, oh, what's going to happen? How am I going to catch it all? And I forgot my mic. <laughs> so I ran home. I got it. It's fine. Everything went to plan. It was my first time interviewing people in French. First time editing something of that mag magnitude, but I loved it. I loved it all. It was really energizing. And while I'm my worst critic, I'll be the first to say that, you know, I see a bunch of things now that I could have done better then, but I'm really proud of what I made and to get to a point, you know, where you learn something from the work you take on and the actions you take. You know, if I never tried to make that video with its mistakes and all, I never would move forward to where I am now. So I am really happy with that video because of how it resonated with my followers. You know, it made people happy. It taught them about the bakery and how it's a part of French culture. And most of all, it showed people, even French people, that there's a side to the bakery that we never see. And there are really cool people working hard behind the scenes. So I'm also really happy that I had the balls to approach a busy bakery owner and to prove to him that I can make something cool. Like, give me a chance. So thank you, Mr. Travers. And even though nothing about the process was easy, it really felt right to me. You know, I feel like that's the type of content I should be doing on We in France because it's not my face talking to you for 10 minutes, um, which makes me nervous, but um, it's really interesting people. And I promise we'll do more of that once the pandemic's over and I could get out and about. 
Um, but even if you're not into the creator side of YouTube, you casually watch videos, you know, I just want to say you'll see channels with tons of subs, hundreds of thousands of views, millions, right? And my achievement might not seem like a big deal since you see these videos all the time, but trust me for a small channel with 1200 subs at the time when I made that video, it's a huge deal. And anyone who's ever built something from nothing, you're feeling me on this. I know that we all started from zero and it is a struggle to see growth, you know, um, on YouTube specifically, when you start, you're a tiny channel, you get one or two new subscribers a day and you see that subscriber count kind of inch up by one or two and you're like, oh yes. And then you'll get five new subs in a day and you'll feel like you're on top of the world. Like, oh yeah, five new subs, you know? So milestones are amazing. I celebrate them often. And I even made a thank you video as my sub count was rising, I think around three or 4,000 subs. I almost started crying because that's what it meant to me, right? So let's get into what I've learned. One, create for yourself first and foremost. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't create reader focused content. Of course you should. You should help people, teach them, entertain them, uh, answer their questions. You don't wanna make a video that doesn't get seen by anyone, right? But whatever you do, let it come from a passionate place, a curious place inside of you. Don't start a creative endeavor solely for the money or because you think it's what people want or for notoriety or for external validation, you know, um, just make sure your intentions are from a really true place of passion and do it because it lights you up to put something out there into the world. You know, it's so important. And I think it goes by the wayside, you know, to create for yourself first and foremost, that way, if a piece of content doesn't reach as many people as you'd hoped, or, you know, people are critical, it's not a disappointment. It's not a failure. It's not a reason to be let down. You know, if you did it for you and you're proud of it, you're happy with it. That's enough. So get clear on why you create and why you do it. And then all you have to do is answer to yourself. And somehow that's really freeing. And it's a lot easier to deal with mentally when you know you answer to yourself. Number two, uh, just go ahead, take action, just get started. Don't worry about the tech. Don't worry about what you don't know and everything else that stalls you from taking action. I'm a thinker. I procrastinate. I don't have the best gear and I'm not an experienced video editor, but I have a passion for all things we in France and that's what drives me. And I just make myself take one small step after another. And you learn, you look back, you realize how far you've come, you know, and that's not to say go out there and do crap work because, oh, well, you don't know anything yet. You need to have decent video and sound quality. Your phone's fine. It's 2020. Your phone is fine, but you look back and you realize you've improved and any ad revenue I make after I pay taxes, it goes back into the channel. I have a bunch of expenses, but, Forget about the bells and whistles and just get out there and create, you know, the, the rest, I really do believe it'll come in time and that's fine. And it's better to take 10 baby steps now than one giant leap in five years, because guess what? You're never going to feel ready even in five years and you'll have lost five years thinking about it. So you learn with every baby step. Learning is what it's all about and you'll never feel ready. Just start. All right. Number three is putting in consistent work pays off. So stay the course. And in my case, it took years for any of my, my blog posts uh, to do even mildly well. You know, this video is the first thing I've ever created on any platform to achieve this level of engagement. You know, none of my blog posts ever did remotely as well as uh, that first bakery video and especially not in like a viral short period of time. So I guess what I want to stress here is more often than not, it takes a while to find your way. I started my blog in 2012, YouTube several years after, and you know, you have little successes along the way that feeds you to keep going. And it's not about luck. Let me be clear on that. You know, yes, the algorithm works in your favor and you know, the video can take off and yes, that there's an element of luck. But what I mean is you shouldn't wait around for that lucky charm to fall out of the sky and bank on luck being that driving factor that gets you to where you want to go doesn't happen that way for the majority. Maybe it happens for 0.001% of people out there that luck is what, you know, gets them to their goals. But I can't stress enough how important it is to lay the foundation and to put in the work, keep showing up for yourself and your community. And there's a Roman philosopher, Seneca. He said this quote that I love luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Luck is what happens when prep meets opportunity. And I believe that with every fiber of my being. All right, next up, people can be inconsiderate and that is putting it lightly, you know, overall for the record, I think people are great, 
But there are these critics, nitpickers, trolls, just nasty people. And let's not forget the ones who show their lack of support by saying nothing at all and only speak up when they have something negative, negative to say. I love those people, right? It's like, oh yeah, you, you like this, you took time watching it, you learned something, but you can't say, hey, that was cool. But if I make a mistake, oh, they chime in, right? And these include people who aren't supportive, you know, in your community, uh, coworkers, friends, even family, people who would just rather keep scrolling than to leave a word of encouragement or take two seconds to put a thumbs up, you know, and these people that you know, those are the ones that are the worst, you know, like jealous people, people who are too self-centered to ever offer a word of encouragement, but love to be entitled and consume your content, but only chime in when they want to point out your mistake, you know, and those people don't matter, right? These trolls. And if you are one, maybe reconsider how you act online, right? But it's life, who cares? And for me personally, at this point, when I'm not in the best headspace or when I don't want to deal with it, I don't look at my comments. I don't see the nastiness. I have someone else look at my comments for me to protect my mental health. So if there's something there that has the potential to hurt me, because listen, you remember that one nasty comment, even if you have 20 really nice ones, right? So I don't even look at the stuff that can hurt me. I don't even see it. And at this point, I don't worry about other people, like their lack of support. It says way more about them than you. And people who lash out or leave snarky, rude comments attacking over like bakery stuff and living abroad, right? We're not talking about hard hitting political or religious issues here, right? People who go crazy over nothing, they're so unhappy with themselves. People who are happy don't act like that. And it's just easier to ignore them, you know, easier said than done, yes, but force yourself not to care, not to care and get to that place, right? Because these people don't matter. And if you look left, you look right for that external validation, you start to lose sight of your purpose and your goals, and that'll just knock you off your game. So my advice is reframe your mindset, get someone to look at your comments for you, or just don't look at them, um, and focus on the people who matter, because everyone else, their opinions don't matter. And I'm speaking from experience here. If you let people's opinions affect you, you've given away some of your energy and focus Two things you desperately need to hold on to to pursue your passion. So just let all that go. All right, the flip side is people can be incredible. Since my video went viral, I've had so many nice comments and they mean more to me than people realize. And they certainly mean more to me than anything negative. Yeah, so it, it really does warm my heart that people take time out of their day to say something nice and that erases any of the negativity or the hard parts, you know? And, it just makes me so happy that people like that exist. You know, just people emailing to say hi, offer words of support. Um, even a veteran video producer reached out via email, introduced himself, offered some of his know-how, um, was happy to answer any questions I had. So yeah, good people exist. And it's a really nice reminder because um, we need that sometimes, right? Um, so yeah, just to be clear, my video was not the most amazing video in the world, right? Um, the views don't mean anything. It didn't change anyone's life in a profound way. It doesn't change the way I go about my day. I make way less money on YouTube than many of you probably think. It's nowhere near a full-time income. And as I said, the money gets reinvested. But the one thing I wanna stress here is I'm a big believer in celebrating the little wins and the little successes and to mark those milestones. And this is cool. And I think it's okay to feel good about yourself and to, to feel good about what you're doing and what you're creating and putting out into the world because it's so easy to get swallowed in the negativity, especially with the year we've had and just get consumed by the noise that doesn't serve us at all, you know? So yeah, 2 million views, it's cool. It's a small win in the whole grand scheme of things, but it's one that means everything to me, especially, you know, since living abroad isn't easy and YouTube isn't easy, it feels good to do something that you've created yourself, put it out there. And it's just, I think most of all, it's insanely validating, not just as the content creator behind the video and what's in it for me, but it's so validating for the people who took the time out of their day three times <laughs> to talk to me and share about their work. You know, the fact that over 2 million people saw the employees there at Tavea Bakery, you know, behind the scenes and employees of a bakery in a small town. I think that's amazing. And it makes me really proud that you know, it's not about the views. It's not about me. It's a win for them. And I couldn't be more thrilled that the video on my channel that went viral was that one because it just goes to show that, you know, it's really not about the creator. It's about the type of the content that you're putting out. So 
In all honesty, I think part of the reason why I started We in France and YouTube was to feel a connection with others at a time when I didn't feel connected at all, you know, as a fish out of water um, in a new country, new to me country and culture. So it's just a space for me to have fun, keep it light, keep creating and connecting. And it really does help me to put content out there and connect with you. And it makes me feel less alone in my little corner of the world and less invisible. And just lets me share a piece of my life and the country I call home, French people, the things around me, well, maybe teaching you something, you know? Um, I've had teachers email me saying, oh, this video or this blog post was so helpful for my lesson. I really appreciate that. And that just means everything to me and it's so rewarding. So. I guess what I want to say is if you've made it this far, one, I hope, hope you'll uh, stick around, subscribe, um, check out my blog and all that good stuff linked below in the description box, uh, companies I support, my newsletter, um, and some merch, my Je m'en fiche sweatshirt here that I'm wearing. So check that all out down below. And before you go, let me give you some encouragement. Uh, if you're struggling right now with anything, stick with it. And I don't just mean a blog or a YouTube channel. I mean, I don't know, a business idea, getting the courage to apply to a new job or pursue a new career, a passion project, even just starting a new workout routine. You know, if it's not going as well as you'd like, just take one small step, at least get your thoughts in order, have a plan, muster up that energy you have and use it to stay focused, stay consistent and just put in the work. Just take one small step. And if you feel passionate about what you're doing and it has value for you, then it's worth it. So keep going. And I just want to say that again, if something you are thinking about or something that you're already doing, that's not going as planned and you're passionate about it, it gets you excited about life. It leaves you feeling energized and hopeful and all those good feelings, then it is worth it. Keep going. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It's your life. We have one and they are far too short. So, Keep taking one small step forward. You will get there. I promise you that. And that's just what I want to leave you with today. So I hope to see you back here on We in France soon. I hope to get out of my house. Lockdown restrictions are easing up and um, maybe I'll get to Angers next weekend. We'll maybe sample some Christmas pastries. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you again for being here and sticking with me to the end on this uh, video. That's a little different, but yay for milestones, yay for wins. And I'll see you back here on We in France soon. Salut. Thank you.